Tale of the Nine Tail began with a man named Li Yan sitting on the ground with his hands tied. Not long after that, a group of Japanese soldiers came to that place and pointed their firearms at him. Those Japanese soldiers accused him of bombing a station in Gyeongshan that ended up killing their commander. But suddenly, Li Yan managed to free himself. The Japanese soldiers were getting even more suspicious of him when they saw that. A soldier immediately shot him in the chest and Li Yan fell down. Just when everyone thought that Li Yan had died, he suddenly got up. The Japanese soldiers were surprised when they saw that, especially when they found out that Li Yan wasn't injured at all. They kept firing their firearms at Li Yan, but it didn't affect Li Yan died at all. They became more panicked as Li Yan was moving closer to them. They had no idea that Li Yan was a powerful nine-tailed fox and a mountain god. Li Yan began to attack those soldiers and managed to defeat all of them easily. There was only one soldier whom he didn't kill. He approached that soldier and put his firearm on his shoulder. He pointed the firearm at a man who was standing near a tree across him. That man seemed unbothered by everything that happened in that place. But when Li Yan shot his cigarette, that man seemed annoyed. That man was named Li Rang. He was Li Yan's younger brother. Li Rang was mad at his brother for disturbing his peace. He then grabbed a bazooka and attacked Li Yan with it. Li Yan attacked him back by using his firearm. Li Yan and Li Rang then got into a fierce gun battle. While they were attacking each other, Li Yan asked Li Rang why he was in the year of 1938 too. He was confused because Li Rang was supposed to die in 2020. Apparently Li Yan was an over 1,000 year old nine-tailed fox. For hundreds of years Li Yan and Li Rang always got into fights. In 2020, Li Yan and Li Rang died. But not long after that, Li Yan was born again, but Li Rang was not. Li Yan was sad because he could never see his brother again. Four months after Li Rang died, Li Yan came to see a woman named Tao Liupa. Tao Liupa was working at the Afterlife Immigration Office, managing the list of dead souls. Li Yan asked her why his brother was not born again. Tao Liupa explained that Li Rang was unable to reincarnate because he had killed too many people. Li Yan demanded Tao Liupa to bring his brother back to life. He promised that he would do anything that Tao Liupa asked him if she brought Li Rang back to life. After thinking for a while, Talupa finally agreed to do that, but with one condition. She said that she would bring Li Rang back to life if Li Yan worked for her. She also asked Li Yan to become a nine-tailed fox again. Li Yan immediately agreed and signed the contract between them. But one evening while Li Yan was hanging out at a cafe by himself, Talupa's husband, Hyun Wayong, came to that place and approached him. Wayong told Li Yan that a man in mask had stolen a crystal called the Guardian Stone. He revealed that the Guardian Stone was very important for both human world and spirit world. He said that the missing of the Guardian Stone could be harmful to the harming in human world and spirit world. After that, Li Yan came to see Taliupa and talked to her about the missing Guardian Stone. Taliupa asked Li Yan to find the Guardian Stone soon. Before Li Yan left that place, Taliupa gave him a watch and told him to return before the dawn. But suddenly, a man came to that place. That man was named Gu Xinju. Xinju was Li Yan's loyal friend. He said that he wanted to help Li Yan in this mission. Talipa told him that Li Yan had gone to the time portal. Li Yan quickly followed him and went to the time portal. Li Yan used the time portal to travel back to 1938, an era when Korea was still under Japanese rule. In the downtown area, Li Yan saw a man in mask staring at him. Li Yan chased that man as he realized that he was the one who had stolen the Guardian Stone. That man tried to run away, but Li Yan chased him. After a while, Li Yan and that man finally got into a fight. Not far from that place, two men gave a bag to a woman who was wearing a nice dress. After that woman received the bag, she walked toward a car that was heavily guarded by a group of Japanese soldiers. Suddenly, that woman opened the bag and took a package that was found inside the bag. But when she was about to throw the package at those Japanese soldiers, Li Yin and the man in mask suddenly came to that place. They continued to have a fight in that place. The man in mask fell down and accidentally dropped the guardian stone that Li Yan was looking for. The woman finally threw the package that she found inside the bag at the Japanese soldiers. Suddenly, a big explosion happened in that place. In that chaotic situation, Li Yan crawled toward the Guardian Stone and tried to pick it up. But a man managed to grab it first. That man then left that place and Li Yan chased him right away. That man went to a small hut in the mountain. Turned out, that man was Li Rang's subordinate. Li Yan was surprised to see Li Rang there, he couldn't believe that he could see his brother again. Li Yan cried and hugged Li Rang. But it seemed that Li Rang didn't feel the same way about him. After that, Li Yan and Li Rang had a conversation. Li Yan found out that Li Rang didn't die in this era. Li Rang offered some food and drink to his brother. Li Yan didn't feel suspicious at all. He took the drink that Li Rang offered him right away. 
But after he took some drink, he realized that Li Rang had put some poison into that drink. Before he had the chance to do anything about it, he slowly lost his consciousness and passed out. Some men were chasing the woman who threw the bomb at the Japanese soldiers. That woman was named Yun Ho. Yun Ho tried to run away from them, but she finally got shot in the back. She fell down and collided with a man. The men who were chasing her approached her and began to attack the man whom the woman collided with. Suddenly, that man warned them to be careful of the fire. Those men were confused when they heard that. They were getting even more confused when they saw one of them catching fire. Soon after that, all of them caught fire too. The man who warned them about the fire was named Qian Mu Young. Mu Young saved the Yun Ho and took her to his house. Mu Young helped that woman to treat her wound. After Yun Ho's wound healed, she talked to Mu Young and thanked him for saving her. In another place, Li Yan finally woke up from his faint and found himself being tied up. Not long after that, a group of Japanese soldiers came to that place and accused him of bombing the station in Gyeongsang. He was confused when he heard that, but he soon realized that Li Rang was the one who told those Japanese soldiers that he had bombed the station. Later, Li Yan and Li Rang got into a fight. While they were attacking each other, Li Yan suddenly dropped his sword. Li Rang was confused when he saw that. He was getting even more confused when he attacked Li Yan with an axe, but Li Yan didn't do anything about it. Turned out Li Yan did that to prove Li Rang that he had no intention to harm him. Li Yan also said that he wanted to make peace with Li Rang. He then patted his brother on the head and asked him to live a better life. After saying that, he left that place. But while he was walking away, the mysterious man in mask suddenly came to that place and stabbed Li Rang. Li Yan was shocked when he saw that. He rushed to his brother and hugged him right away. The mysterious man in mask looked at him before he left that place. Li Yan took Li Rang to an inn and rested him in bed. He was worried about his brother because he was in critical condition. He then got out of the building and tried to get a help for his brother. After a while, he finally met with a man named Yu Bang Sak. Bang Sak claimed that he had an ability to make people become immortal and young again. Bang Sak said that he was an immortal being who was destined to live for eternity. Li Yan came to see him and asked him to save Li Rang. He said that he would do anything that Bang Sak asked him if he saved his brother. Bang Sak finally said that he would help Li Rang if Li Yan brought a sword called Uchiri's sword to him. He explained that he had been living for so long and he was tired of it. But unfortunately, he couldn't die unless he was killed with Uchiri's sword. Li Yan understood and immediately agreed to their deal. At the end, Li Rang finally woke up from his faint. But he soon realized that it was only his spirit that woke up. He turned around and saw his physical body lying weak on bed. He was horrified with the thought that he had become a ghost. He saw Li Yun and tried to communicate with him, but Li Yun couldn't see his spirit. Li Yun only sneezed when Li Rang's spirit repeatedly ran into him. Li Yun approached Li Rang's physical body and told him that he wouldn't give up to find a way to save him. Li Rang was touched when he heard that. Li Yun realized that he didn't have much time to find the Uchiri sword. He needed to find the sword soon to save his brother. While he was looking for the sword, he suddenly remembered the person who had the Uchiri sword in this era was him. The version of Li Yan from 1938 was younger and had long hair. Li Yan went to Li Yan 1938's house and sneaked into his room. He saw the Uchiri sword on the bed and tried to take it. But suddenly, Li Yan 1938 came to that place. Li Yan was surprised when he saw him there. He thought that Li Yan 1938 would attack and capture him. But turned out Li Yan 1938 was under the influence of opium and thought that Li Yan was only his reflection on the mirror. Li Yan used that opportunity to take the Uchiri sword and left that place. But unfortunately, Li Yan 1938 found out that Li Yan had stolen his sword. While Li Yan was trying to run away from that place, Li Yan 1938 suddenly showed up and stopped him. Li Yan 1938 attacked Li Yan and Li Yan attacked him back. Li Yan and Li Yan 1938 then got into a fight. At first, Li Yan managed to attack his opponent easily. But after a while, Li Yan 1938 was getting stronger and overpowered him. Li Yan then took out his phone and showed Li Yan 1938 the picture of his girlfriend who had just passed away. Li Yan said that his girlfriend was still alive and in Manchuria now. Li Yan 1938 was shocked when he heard that. He believed in what Li Yan said and rushed to Manchuria. While Li Rang was looking around the inn, he saw Bang Sak and realized that he was an evil demon. He was surprised when he saw Bang Sak stealing people's soul to make him stay young and immortal. Surprisingly, Bang Sak managed to hear him, but he couldn't hear him. He then ordered his men to bring Li Rang's physical body to him. Bang Sak's men went to Li Rang's room, but they didn't find him there. Apparently, Li Rang's physical body had been taken by some women to another room. Li Yan was the one who told them to do that. 
Before he left the inn earlier, he told a Kisang there to move Li Rang's body if he had returned to the inn at midnight. Unfortunately, Bang Sak managed to find Li Rang's physical body after he interrogated a Kisang. After Li Yen got the Uchri sword, he returned to the inn and came to see Bang Sak. But he soon found out that Bang Sak had tricked him since the beginning. Bang Sak didn't ask Li Yan to get the Uchri sword so that he could use it to kill himself, but so that he could become immortal by destroying it. While Li Yan and Bang Sak were getting into a fight, a girl whose soul had been stolen by Bang Sak came to that place. That girl called Bang Sak a turtle demon. Turned out that girl had been possessed by Li Rang. Li Rang entered that girl's body so that he could talk to Li Yan. After Li Yan found out that Bang Sak was a turtle demon, he began to cast a special spell to get rid of the turtle demon. Because of that, Bang Sak turned back into his real physical form. Li Yan also attacked Bang Sak with the Uchari sword. After he managed to defeat Bang Sak, all souls that Bang Sak had stolen returned to their bodies, including Li Rang's soul. Unfortunately, Li Yan failed to return the Guardian Stone because the time portal had been closed. Because of that, he couldn't travel back to his world and got stuck in 1938. One afternoon, Li Yan and Li Rang got on a train and headed to a place. They saw many people and Japanese soldiers on the train. Before Li Yan got on the train, he came to see Tao Liu Ipa from 1938 and asked her about how he could return to his era, 2023. Tao Liu Ipa 1938 said that she would help Li Yan if Li Yan helped her. She asked Li Yan to take a golden flute that would be carried by a passenger on the train that headed to Busan in the afternoon. Because of that, Li Yan got on the train and went on his mission to get the golden flute. Li Yan and Li Rang sat across the Japanese soldier who carried the golden flute. On the same train, a beautiful and powerful woman named Ryu Hongju was preparing herself to meet Li Yan. Just like Li Yan, Hongju was also a mountain god. Hongju was obsessed with Hongju because of his handsome face. She was so happy when she found out that Li Yan was on that train. So she prepared herself and made sure that she had looked perfect before she met with Li Yan. After the train went through the dark tunnel, the train passengers found out that they had been robbed. They panicked because of that. Turned out, Li Rang was the one who had robbed them. He ordered his men to rob those passengers so that he could help Li Yan to steal the golden flute from the Japanese soldier. But unfortunately, Han Ju managed to get the golden flute first. The Japanese soldier approached her and asked her to give the golden flute back to him, but Han Ju refused to do that. Han Ju and the Japanese soldier then got into a fight. After a while, Han Ju finally managed to defeat the Japanese soldier. Li Yan and Li Rang found out that Han Ju had the golden flute. So they went to Han Ju's room and asked Han Ju to give the golden flute to them. Han Ju happily did what they asked her because she really liked Li Yan. But sadly, Li Yan didn't have the same feeling about her. He felt guilty when he had to reject her love for him. Han Ju was mad at him because of that. Li Yan was scared when he saw Han Ju going berserk, especially after he remembered that Han Ju was a very powerful god. Han Ju was mad because Li Yan always rejected her no matter what she had done for him. She suddenly attacked Li Yan and Li Yan attacked her back. Han Ju and Li Yan then got into a fight. They climbed the roof of the train and continued to get into a fight there. While they were attacking each other, Han Ju suddenly slipped and almost fell down, but Li Yan quickly grabbed her and saved her. Han Ju blushed because her face was so close to Li Yan's face. But Li Yan suddenly let her go and Han Ju was mad at him again. Han Ju became so angry that she managed to defeat Li Yan and stop the train by using only her hands. While Han Ju was busy stopping the train, Li Yan got off the train and ran away from that place. Hong Ju saw Li Yan and Li Rang leaving that place. She smiled and said to herself that she and Li Yan would meet again in the future. After a while, Li Yan finally arrived at the Afterlife Immigration Office. He came to see Talipa 1938 and gave the golden flute to her. Talipa 1938 explained that the Japanese soldiers planned to use the golden flute to destroy Korea, so they needed to steal the golden flute from them to stop them. At the Japanese army headquarters, the Governor General's Bureau of Police named Ryuhai was angry when he found out that they had lost the Golden Flute. The Japanese soldier who was tasked to carry the Golden Flute, Akira, apologized to him because he had failed to protect the Golden Flute. But Ryuhai was so furious that he went berserk and began to kill his subordinates in that room. He approached Akira and tortured him too. But he decided to give him a chance and ask him to bring the Golden Flute to him. Li Yan and Li Rang went to a boutique. Li Yan wanted Li Rang to change his appearance because he thought that his brother looked like a thug. So he bought some expensive and nice clothes for Li Rang. While Li Rang was trying to tie his tie, a worker suddenly approached him and offered him a help. Li Rang blushed and got awkward when that worker tied his tie. It seemed that he liked that worker. That worker was named Jiang Yu He. After Li Rang finished changing his appearance, Li Yan asked him to go to an inn with him. 
Surprisingly, they met with Hong Ju again in that place. Li Yan was surprised when he saw Hong Ju there. He was getting even more surprised when he found out that Li Yan was the owner of the inn. He suddenly changed his mind and wanted to go to another inn. But he finally decided to stay at that inn because he was afraid that Hong Ju would get mad at him and go berserk again. The next morning, Li Yan came to see Hong Ju and asked her for help. He asked her to help him to find the man in mass because he wanted to take revenge on him. Hong Ju said that she would help him but with one condition. She asked him to replace her as a judge of a beauty pageant. Li Yan finally agreed to do that because he needed to find the man in masks soon. He went to the beauty pageant and saw Yun Ho, the woman who bombed the station in Gyeongshan another day. Yun Ho and Li Yan then had a conversation. Li Yan found out that Yun Ho was a reporter who had been fighting for Korean independence. She hated everything about Japan, especially Japanese soldiers who stayed in Korea. Not long after that, the beauty pageant finally began. Li Yan seemed not interested at all in that beauty pageant. Instead of judging the contestants, Li Yan made some scribbles on paper. After a while, they finally announced the winner of the competition. But while Yun Ho was taking some pictures of the contestants, the winner suddenly jumped off the chair and attacked people there. Everybody was frightened when they saw that. It seemed that that woman had turned into a zombie-like creature. Li Yan attacked that zombie, but the zombie ran away from him and attacked people outside the building. Mu Yum saw that zombie and quickly put her into a coffin. In the building, Li Yan and Yun Ho talked about the zombie. It was revealed that the zombie was called Yaksha. There had been many beautiful women who had turned into Yakshas. It was rumored that they turned into Yakshas after they received cosmetic treatments at a beauty parlor called Choi Beauty Parlor. After that, Li Yan and Li Rang went to Choi Beauty Parlor to investigate that place. They wanted to find the person who was responsible for turning those beautiful women into such horrible creatures. They pretended that they were looking for a job. The owner of the beauty parlor accepted them right away because she thought that their handsome face would bring advantage to her beauty parlor. Turned out, she was right. Since Li Yan and Li Rang worked at that beauty parlor, many visitors came to that place because they wanted to see them. After Li Yan and Li Rang worked in that place for a while, they finally found some suspects. They felt suspicious of the owner of the beauty parlor and a reserve worker. But they didn't have any evidence that they were the ones who had turned those beautiful women into yakshas. Later, Li Yan noticed that all mirrors in that place were broken. He said that he would replace those mirrors with new ones. The next morning, Li Rang's men came to that place and brought a new mirror. When Li Rang returned to the building, he found out that all visitors in that place had turned into yakshas. He also saw his brother Li Yan getting attacked by those yakshas. Li Yan told him that the shampoo that was provided by that beauty parlor had been cursed by yakshas, and that was why those women turned into yakshas. While Li Yan and Li Rang were attacking those yakshas, the reserve worker suddenly showed up behind them. It was revealed that she was the demon who had cursed the shampoo in that place. Li Rang walked toward that worker and showed her the new mirror that he received from his men. That worker writhed in pain and got burned because of that mirror. Turned out, she had been breaking all mirrors in that place because she could get hurt by those mirrors. That worker finally admitted that she was ordered by her superior to turn humans into yakshas. Her superior was the man in mask. After that worker said that she suddenly got burned again and vanished into thin air, Li Yan was getting even more curious of the man in mask after he heard what that worker said. In the evening, Mu Yun took the Yaksha, whom he had put into the coffin to the dark forest. He told that woman that he would turn her into a perfect Yaksha. But suddenly, someone came to that place and attacked Mu Yun. Turned out, Mu Yun was the man in mask whom Li Yan had been looking for all this time. While Li Yan and Li Rang were walking down the street, they ran into Li Yan's loyal friend Xin Ju. Li Yan was happy to see him there and hugged him right away. That evening, it was very crowded at Han Ju's inn. There were many Japanese soldiers in that place. They were watching the Kisangs who were dancing for them. But suddenly, a Japanese soldier teased and humiliated a Kisang there. Han Ju was mad when she found out about that. She came to that room and asked the Japanese soldier to compete against her in a drinking game. She told the Japanese soldier to leave that place if he got drunk first. But if she was the one who got drunk first and the Japanese soldier could do anything to her, the Japanese soldier thought that it was interesting and accepted the challenge right away. The drinking game then began. Hong Ju seemed calm when she had a drink. She had been drinking a lot, but she hadn't gotten drunk yet. After a while, the Japanese soldier finally got drunk and gave in. As the consequence, he needed to leave that place. He got embarrassed and did that Hong Ju told him. But before he left that place, he approached a Kisang and slapped her face. Hong Ju was angry when she saw that. While the Japanese soldier was walking down the street, someone suddenly came to that place and stopped him. Turned out, it was Han Ju. She immediately attacked that Japanese soldier and killed him with a string. Meanwhile, Li Yan and Shin Ju were having a dinner together. They were talking about their mission in 1938. 
They needed to wait for a month until they could return to 2023 because the time portal wouldn't get open until that time. While they were having a conversation, Li Rang came to that place and listened to their conversation secretly. Li Rang then went to a club and watched a performance in that place. He saw the woman in red dress who sang in that place and recognized her right away. He remembered that that woman was Yu He, the worker, who helped him to tie his tie at the boutique back then. While Yu He was singing, she suddenly turned into a mermaid. Turned out, she was a mermaid who could change her physical form. A drunk man approached Yu He and tried to touch her tail, but Li Rang stalked him right away. That drunk man was mad at him because of that. He attacked Li Rang, but Li Rang attacked him back. Li Rang and that drunk man then got into a fight. More men helped that drunk man to attack Li Rang, but Li Rang managed to defeat all of them. After that, Yu He thanked Li Rang for saving her from that drunk man. To express her gratitude, she gave her scale to Li Rang. In the forest, Mu Yang was heading to a cave. But when he was about to enter the cave, the gatekeeper of the cave suddenly showed up and stopped him. The gatekeeper knew that Mu Yang would insist on entering the cave even though he didn't allow him to do it. So he summoned a group of soldiers to that place and ordered them to attack Mu Yang. But Mu Yang attacked them back and managed to defeat all of them. He produced fire from his hands and burned those soldiers to death. After that, Mu Yang entered the cave and saved a girl in that place. Mu Yang removed the cloth that covered that girl's eyes. After that, that girl headed to the inn where Li Yan stayed at. At night, Li Yan suddenly woke up from his sleep. He was surprised when he saw a girl in his room. But before he had the chance to process what happened, that girl suddenly disappeared. Li Yan was surprised and confused when he saw that. He was looking for that girl, but he didn't find her. The next morning, Li Yan and Li Rang were having a breakfast together. Li Yan began to tell his brother about his childhood friends. He said that when he was a child, he had two best friends, they were Hong Ju and Mu Yang. Li Yan, Han Ju, and Mu Yang were powerful mountain gods. Each of them had their own special ability. Unfortunately, when they became adults, their relationships became strained and they became rivals. It was because they had different life goals and perspectives on life. Han Ju went to a cafe and met with Mu Yang there. Li Yan still had no idea that Mu Yang was the man in mask whom he was looking for. Only Han Ju who knew about it, but she kept this information from Li Yan. Mu Yang told Hong Ju about the reason why he stabbed Li Rang back then. He revealed that he did that because he wanted to take revenge on Li Yang for the death of his older brother. While Hong Ju was leaving that place, he saw Li Yang arriving there. Suddenly, Li Yan felt that there was something wrong with his eyes. His eyes turned into different color and he couldn't see. In such confusing situation, Mu Yang showed up behind him and tried to attack him with his sword. But Hong Ju took out her sword and stopped him right away. Even though the three friends had become rivals, Han Ju decided to be on Li Yan's side and protect him from Mu Yang. Han Ju escorted Li Yan to her inn. After a while, Li Yan finally managed to return to his room safely. He still had no idea that Mu Yang was trying to attack him earlier. Han Ju went to Mu Yang's place and saw a girl there. Turned out that girl was the one who had blinded Li Yan. She did it when she came to Li Yan's room last night. That girl was named Sektani. Sektani was a devil who was born in a horrendous ritual. Before she became a devil, she was only an innocent girl who was being sacrificed in a ritual. She was locked inside a box and left there until she died. Hong Ju was shocked when she found out about that girl's story. She didn't understand why Mu Yang went that far to hurt Li Yan. At the end, Shin Ju covered Li Yan's eyes with a cloth so that he wouldn't have eye irritation. Li Yan suspected that someone was trying to curse him when he got stuck in the year of 1938. Shin Ju told Li Yan and Li Rang that he would look for a cure for Li Yan. After Shin Ju left that room, Li Yan tried to eat some food. Li Rang felt bad for him when he saw his brother struggling to put the food into his mouth. He suddenly remembered about the time when his brother used to feed him when he was a child. Because of that, he finally decided to help his brother to eat. At home, Mu and his father, a government official, announced that he would help the Empire of Japan. The men in that room were happy when they heard that announcement. An Ho was the only person in that room who was not happy with her father's plan. She strongly disagreed with the Japanese occupation of Korea. But turned out, Ryuhai had a plan to propose to Yun Ho because he wanted to expand Japanese territory and power in Korea. A group of bandits went to Hong Ju's inn and attacked Li Yan. Turned out, those bandits were the demons who had been defeated by Li Yan before. They came to that place to take revenge on Li Yan. Even though Li Yan was blind and outnumbered by them, he still managed to attack and defeat all those bandits. At the city gate, Shin Ju and Li Rang were preparing themselves for a ritual to remove the influence of evil power over Li Yan. Li Rang was tasked to keep walking toward the inn without turning his head even once. He was getting closer to the inn and almost completed his mission. 
but suddenly, he got shot with an arrow. He immediately collapsed because of that. At the city gate, Shinju also collapsed after he got shot with an arrow. Turned out, Miu Young was the one who shot Shinju and Li Rang with a bow and arrow. He knew that they were doing a ritual to help Li Yan. So they stopped them from doing that. While Li Yim was trying to leave the inn, he found a letter that was stuck on an arrow. Suddenly, Sekni came to that place and approached him. She read the letter for Li Yan. In that letter, the sender told Li Yan that Shinju and Li Rang had been kidnapped and asked him to go to a mountain. The sender said that Setani would guide Li Yan to that mountain, but Li Yan needed to carry her on the back. When Li Yan and Setani almost arrived in the mountain, Nu Young suddenly came to that place and shot Li Yan with his bow and arrow. At first, Li Yan managed to avoid him. But Mi Young kept shooting him and finally managed to shot him in the leg. Li Yan writhed in pain and sat under a tree. Turned out, Mi Young held Xin Zhu and Li Rang captive in the well. Xin Zhu and Li Rang were struggling to breathe because the water level kept rising. Li Rang thought that they couldn't keep going on like this. He dived into the well and lifted Xin Zhu so that he could breathe properly. Suddenly, the scale that Yu he gave to Li Rang earlier lit up. In another place, Yu suddenly felt pain in her chest. She somehow had a feeling that Li Rang was in danger. Even though Li Yan couldn't see and his leg got injured, he was still trying to find Li Rang and Xin Zhu. After a while, he finally arrived in a cave. It was the cave where Mu Yang found Satani. Suddenly, Satani asked Li Yan why he forgot her. Li Yan was confused when he heard her question. He didn't understand what Satani meant by saying that. But after he heard a bell rang, he suddenly remembered the time when he used to become a mountain god. Back then, one afternoon, he saw a girl releasing a goldfish into the wild. He was very proud of her when he saw that. He rewarded that girl with a bell and promised her that he would grant a wish that that girl made. But one day, that girl was forced to become a sacrifice for a ritual. They locked her inside a box and left her there until she died. While she was being imprisoned in that box, she kept calling Li Yan and begging him to help her. But unfortunately, Li Yan had never showed up in that place until that girl died. Back to the present time, Li Yun was heartbroken when he found out about what happened to that girl. He said that he didn't come to save her because he was no longer a mountain god back then. He regretted that he couldn't save her. He then hugged Satani and apologized to her. He also called Satani by her real name Li. Li finally decided to forgive Li Yan. She suddenly turned back into her human form. The curse was also finally lifted and Li Yan could see again. Li then revealed to Li Yun about where Xin Zhu and Li Rang were being held captive. Li Yan rushed to the well and saved Xin Zhu first. While he was saving Xin Zhu, a woman suddenly came to that place and jumped into the well. Turned out that woman was Yu He. Yu He came to that place because the scale that she gave to Li Rang told her that Li Rang was in danger. Because of Yu He, Li Rang finally managed to survive. Li Yan felt relieved when he saw that. He thanked Yu He for saving his brother. In the forest, Mi Young was angry because his plan was ruined. He promised to himself that he would find a way to take revenge on Li Yan, no matter what happened. At the inn, Yu He helped Li Yan to take care of Li Rang. Even though Li Rang managed to be saved, he was very weak right now. Li Yan and Xin Zhu were happy with Yu He's presence in that place. They thought that Yu He could become a good partner for Li Rang. Unlike Yu He, who was very affectionate, Li Rang was still shy to show his feeling for her. Li Rang told Yu He that he owed his life to her, and he would repay her kindness someday. Li Yan went outside and talked to Du Mok, Li Rang's right-hand man. Li Yan asked Du Mok about the progress of their attempt to find the man in mask. Du Mok said that someone informed him that the man in mask had robbed a rich person's house and stole a jewelry box from that place. At home, Mu Yan opened the jewelry box that he had stolen. He was disappointed when he didn't find what he was looking for there. After that, he went to the slums and gave the jewelry that he had stolen to poor people who lived there. In the evening, Xin Zhu and Li Yan went to a house of a rich government official named Sun Wu. Li Yan asked Xin Zhu to sneak into that house and stole a jewelry box from that place. Xin Zhu managed to sneak into Sun Wu's house and find the jewelry box. But when he was about to steal that jewelry box, Yun Ho suddenly came to that room and pointed her gun at his head. Xin Zhu was surprised when he saw Yun Ho there. He didn't know that Yun Ho was Sun Wu's daughter. In 2023, Xin Zhu recognized Yun Ho as Kai Yuri, his own wife. But since it was 1938, Yun Ho didn't know who Xin Zhu was. Xin Zhu then grabbed a box and ran away from that place. Yun Ho chased him right away and shot him with her gun. Xin Zhu got shot for several times, but he still managed to run away from her. After Xin Zhu returned to Li Yan, they left that place together. While Li Yan and Xin Zhu were running away from that place, they ran into Miu Yan, the man in mask. Li Yan and Miu Yan then got into a fight. Miu Yan attacked Li Yan because he wanted the box that Xin Zhu stole from Sun Wu's house. 
While Li Yun and Miu Young were attacking each other, Li Rang and his men suddenly came to that place and surrounded Miu Young. Miu Young immediately ran when he saw them. Li Rang and his men chased him right away, but some people in masks suddenly showed up in that place and stopped them. Turned out, those people were the poor people whom Miu Young saw another day. Miu Young ordered those people to do what he asked and paid them with the jewelry that he stole. Because of the help of those people, Miu Young managed to run away from that place and take the box that Xin Ju stole from Sun Wu's house with him. But when Miu Young opened the box, he only found a stone inside. He realized that he had been tricked. Li Yan, Xin Ju, and Li Rang returned to the inn. When they arrived there, they checked another box that Xin Ju stole from Sun Wu's house and found only jewelry there. Xin Ju then took out another box and opened it. He was surprised when he found a golden ruler inside. That golden ruler was an heirloom. It was believed that the golden ruler could bring people back to life. Li Yan realized that the man in mask was looking for that golden ruler and wanted to bring someone back to life with it. A few days later, Li Yan and Xin Ju were heading to the inn. When they arrived there, they found a baby in a basket in front of the inn. They were surprised when they saw that baby. They noticed that there was a constellation sign of that baby's forehead. Xin Ju soon became comfortable with that baby. He carried and played with that baby as if he was his father. Li Yan still wondered about who had left that baby in front of the inn. Not long after that, Li Rang arrived in that place. It seemed that he didn't like the presence of human baby near him. Li Yan also didn't like that baby. Among the three of them, only Xin Ju who enjoyed the company of that baby. Suddenly, Xin Ju said that he would go buy some food and diapers for that baby. He gave that baby to Li Yan and Li Rang and told them to take care of her. After Xin Ju left that place, Li Rang suggested that they left that baby in another house. Li Yan thought that it was a good idea. He and Li Rang then went to a neighbor's house and left the baby there. But when they returned to the inn, they saw that baby in front of the inn. They went to another house and left the baby there. But when they returned to the inn, they found the baby in that place again. Li Rang and Li Yang didn't give up. They kept taking the baby to many different houses and leaving her there. They even traveled miles away and left that baby in a house that was located far away from the inn, but the baby kept coming back to the inn. Li Rang and Li Yan finally decided to give up. They were trying to take care of that baby even though they had no idea about how to do it. One day, Li Rang took the baby to the downtown area with him. While he was playing a gambling game, he realized that the baby had an ability to predict something. Li Rang then used that baby to help him to play the gambling game. Because of the help of the baby, Li Rang managed to win the game. He was so happy because of that. Since he found out about that baby's special ability, he began to like that baby. Mu Yong visited a grave in the forest. Turned out, it was his older brother's grave. He suddenly remembered about the time when he and his brother spent some time together. He became sad when he remembered that moment. He was missing his brother, he was feeling very empty without his brother. His sadness soon turned into anger when he remembered that it was because of Li Yan that he lost his brother. Yun Ho attended the opening ceremony that was held by her father. It was revealed that Sun Wu worked with Japan because he was after the gold mine that was managed by Japan. Suddenly, a man got out of the gold mine. Sun Wu was surprised when he saw that man. He wondered about what that man was doing in that gold mine and ordered his men to capture him. After they interrogated that man, they found out that that man was a fortune god. At first, they didn't believe it because all that man was doing all day was just eating carrots. But someone confirmed that he was a fortune god. Ryuvai ordered his men to keep the fortune god in that place. He planned to use the fortune god to help Japan to find more valuable resources in Korea. The fortune god said that he would help Japan if they brought a baby who had a constellation sign on her forehead to him. Ryuhai's men then began to search the entire city to find the baby. They put up the posters of that baby and stated that they would give 1 million yen to anyone who brought that baby to them. While Li Yin, Li Rang, and Xin Ju were strolling around the sea with the baby, they saw the posters of the baby that Ryuhai's men put up in that place. Some people saw the baby whom they carried and recognized her as the baby whom Ryuhai's men were looking for. Li Yin, Li Rang, and Xin Ju immediately ran when those people tried to get the baby. After a while, they finally managed to run away from that place and save the baby. Li Yan decided to call that baby Li Mei Ho. Li Yan wondered why Ryu Hai and his men were after Mei Ho and even prepared a large amount of money for anyone who brought her to them. Li Rang then showed Mei Ho's special ability to Li Yan. He hit a coin and asked Mei Ho to show him where he was hiding the coin. Li Yan was amazed when Mei Ho knew where Li Rang was hiding the coin. He realized that Mai Ho was a fortune god. He was worried about Mei Ho because Ryu Hai and his men were after her. He was also worried about himself because the man in mask was still trying to take revenge on him. While Hong Ju was leaving the station, Ryu Hai's subordinate suddenly showed up and stopped her. He told Hong Ju that Ryu Hai wanted to meet with her. 
Hong Ju then went with him and finally met with Ryu Hai. Ryu Hai told her that he wanted the baby who was staying with Li Yan at her inn. Hong Ju refused to give that baby to him. But Ryu Hai revealed that one of her Kisangs was being held captive in that place. He said that he would free that Kisang if Hong Ju brought Mei Ho to him. Hong Ju was surprised when she heard that. She then went to her inn and sneaked into Li Yan's room when Li Yan and the others were sleeping. She quietly took Mei Ho with her and returned to Ryu Hai's place. When she arrived in that place, she saw the fortune god there. Akira brought Mei Ho to the fortune god and asked him to tell him about where they could find gold in Korea. But the fortune god didn't answer his question and kept eating his carrot. Akira was mad because of that. He threatened to kill the baby, but Hamanju stopped him right away. Hanju then kneeled before the fortune god politely begged him to tell her about where they could find many gold in Korea. The fortune god finally showed her a location in the river. Li Yan and Shinju disguised themselves as police officers and went to the police station. They knew that Hanju was the one who took Mei Ho. But they had created a plan and went to that place to execute their plan. Hanju and Ryu Hai's men went to the river that the fortune god was talking about. The fortune god jumped into the river and searched that place. After a while, he finally managed to find some gold in that river. Ryu Hai's men were excited when they saw that. Turned out, in the night when Hongju sneaked into Li Yan's room and took Mei Ho, she also woke Li Yan up and told him about her plan. Hongju said that she was going to take Mei Ho to Ryu Hai's place. While she was doing that, she asked Li Yan to free the Kisang who was being imprisoned at the police station. So Li Yan disguised himself as a police officer and went to the police station to do what Hongju asked him. After a while, he and Shinju finally managed to find the Kisang who was being held captive in that place and quickly freed her. In the river, Akira approached the fortune god and asked him to tell him about another location where they could find gold. After the fortune god showed him the place, Akira suddenly shot him. After that, Akira walked toward Meiho and tried to shoot her too. But Meiho suddenly jumped and avoided him. Akira was surprised when he saw Meiho turning into a man. Apparently, Li Rang had been disguising himself as Mei Ho all this time. Li Rang and Akira then got into a fight. After Li Yan and Shinju freed the Kisang, Li Yan asked Shinju to take the Kisang to the inn. While Li Yan was strolling around the city, he ran into Ryu Hai. He was alarmed when he sensed the smell of blood from Ryu Hai. The smell of blood indicated that the person was a demon. Li Yan immediately took out his sword and attacked Ryu Hai with it. Turned out, Ryu Hai had also prepared his sword and attacked Li Yan back with it. While Li Yan and Ryu Hai were attacking each other, Ryu Hai suddenly ran away from that place. After Ryu Hai left, Li Yan held his trembling hand. He realized that Ryu Hai was a very powerful demon. After that, Li Yan returned to the inn. He carried Mei Ho with him. Li Rang also returned to that place after he managed to defeat Akira in the river. The fortune god said goodbye to them. Li Yan gave Mei Ho another fortune god to him. The fortune god said that he and Mei Ho would travel the world together. Before they left that place, the fortune god left a constellation sign on Li Yan's hand. He explained that the constellation sign could save Li Yun or people around him someday. Li Yan was thankful when he heard that. After that, the fortune god and Mei Ho left that place. One evening, Li Yan heard someone called his name. He got out of his room to find the person who had called him. He was surprised when he saw his longtime friend Mu Young in that place. He couldn't believe that he could see him again. He walked toward him and hugged him right away. But suddenly, he asked him about who he was. He also took out his sword and attacked Mu Young with it. He didn't believe that the man in front of him was his friend Mu Young because he believed that Mu Young had died. In her room, Hong Ju and Kisang were having a conversation. Suddenly, her bodyguard Jae Yu came to that place and told Hong Ju that there was a commotion outside. Hong Ju then went outside to see what happened there. She was surprised when she saw Li Yun and Mu Yun getting into a fight. She screamed and told them to stop fighting, but Li Yun and Mu Yun ignored her. Han Ju was mad because of that. She threw her sword at them and it stabbed them right in the chest. Li Yun and Mu Yun finally stopped fighting after they got stabbed with Han Ju's sword. Han Ju approached them and berated them. She quickly pulled out her sword and Li Yun suddenly vomited blood. Mu Yun was a little worried when he saw Li Yun vomiting blood. Han Ju told Mu Yun that he was the only person who could cure Li Yun. Mu Yun didn't know about what to do. He held a deep grudge for Li Yun and wanted to take revenge on him. But when he saw Li Yun dying like that, he suddenly felt bad for him. After thinking for a while, he finally decided to help Li Yun. Mu Yun then took Li Yun to a room and began to treat his wound. Mu Yun was a mountain god who had an ability to treat any kinds of wounds, no matter how severe it was. Mu Yun told Hong Ju that Li Yun would recover soon, but he still needed to take a rest. Li Yan still had no idea that Mu Young was the man in mask whom he was looking for. Mu Young was looking at the red bag on the roof. 
He was the one who kept that red bag in that place. Turned out, it was the reason why Mu Yang came to Li Yan's place. Mu Yang received that red bag from the King of Hell. The King of Hell told him that he could use that red bag to summon evil demon. Mu Yang planned to use the red bag to summon the evil demon to that place and order him to kill Li Yan. The next morning, Li Yan finally woke up from his faint. It seemed that his wound had healed. Han Ju was happy because she could finally spend time together with Li Yan and Mu Yang again. It reminded her of the time when they were still friends. Han Ju, Li Yan, and Mu Yang finally decided to hang out together that day. They went to the city and spent some time together there. They went to the movie theater, had a drink, and strolled around the city. At the inn, the Kisangs were studying. An Ho was the one who taught them. After they finished studying, they played a spirit summoning game. To play the game, four people needed to stand in each corner of the room. Then a person walked to another person and tapped that person's shoulder. The person who got tapped in the shoulder then walked to another person and tapped their shoulder. That person then did the same to the next person, and they continued to do that until a spirit showed up. At first, Yan Ho thought that it was only a game. But after they played the game for a while, a spirit suddenly showed up in that place. The Kisangs were confused when they found out that Yan Ho was missing. Turned out, the spirit took Yan Ho to a dark, strange place. Yan Ho was scared when she found herself in that place. Hong Ju, Li Yan, and Mu Yang finally returned to the inn. When they arrived there, the Kisangs told Hong Ju that Yan Ho went missing. Hong Ju was mad when she found out that they had played such dangerous game. Hong Ju then discussed about that problem with Mu Yang and Li Yan. Mu Yang was confused when he heard the story. He said that the game usually only summon a weak spirit. But this time, the spirit managed to kidnap a human. Mu Yang believed that the spirit who showed up and kidnapped Yan Ho was a very powerful spirit. After they discussed about this problem, they finally decided to play the spirit summoning game to save Yan Ho. Since it required four people to play the game, they asked Shin Ju to play the game with them. After that, they began to play the game. While they were playing the game, a silhouette of a man was seen on the door. They thought that it was the silhouette of Li Rang, but Mu Yang said that it was the silhouette of a demon. Li Yan then went out of the room and collided with that man. But turned out that man was indeed Li Rang. Li Yan asked Mu Yang why he said that it was not Li Rang. Mu Yang was confused when he heard that he said that he had never said such thing. During such confusing situation, Han Ju suddenly disappeared. Li Yan and Mu Yang realized that they couldn't underestimate the spirit who kidnapped Yun Ho and Han Ju. Since Shen Ju had an ability to speak to animals, he asked a black cat about the spirit who kidnapped Yun Ho and Han Ju. That black cat revealed that the spirit was a demon named Sam Biyum. Li Yan and Mu Yang were surprised when they heard that. They knew that Sam Biyum was a very powerful demon. They wondered why a very powerful demon like Sam Biyum came to Han Ju's inn. After Mu Yang talked to the King of Hell, he finally found out that Sam Biyum came to that place because of the red bag that he put in that place. He was mad at himself because of that. He regretted that Han Ju had to suffer because of what he did. Li Yan and Mu Yang then performed another ritual to save Yun Ho and Han Ju. This time, they were helped by Li Rang and a black cat. Li Rang was tasked away outside and hold a rope. Not long after that, the room became dark. Li Rang went inside the room to see what happened there and found out that Li Yan and Mu Yang were already gone. There was only a rope that had been tied in such a way in that room. Turned out, Li Yan and Mu Yang were brought to a place called the Cursed Route. That place was located in another world, but it looked like a real town. Li Yan and Mu Yang were confused when they found out that the people there mistook them as actors who played in a historical film that was set in the Zhoujin Dynasty. They were getting even more confused when they saw Han Ju in that place. They approached her, but Han Ju didn't know who they were. It was revealed that in that world, Han Ju was an actress who played in the same historical film. Li Yan and Mu Yang believed that Sam Biyum was the one who did this to them. They had tried many ways to make Han Ju remember about who she was and persuade her to go with them, but they failed to do that. Han Ju refused to go with them and told them to stay away from her. At the end, Li Rang received a call from someone. He heard someone talk and recognized his voice as Shin Ju's voice. That person told him to spread his blood on the rope. Li Rang immediately did what he told him because he thought that he was Shin Ju. But suddenly, that person's voice changed. Turned out that person was not Shin Ju, but Sam Biyum who posed as Shin Ju. Sam Biyum had an ability to pose as someone as he liked. After that, Sam Biyum posed as Li Yan. He asked Li Rang to help him to get out of the cupboard. He kept messing with Li Rang by sending a group of people in cloak to that room. He did that so that Li Rang would let go of the rope that he was holding. If Li Rang let go of that rope, then Li Yun and Mu Yang wouldn't be able to return to their real world. But Li Rang refused to let go of that rope no matter what happened. 
He didn't even care that his hand got injured because of holding that rope. He just wanted his brother to return to that world safely. In another world, San Biam was still messing with Li Yan and Miu Yang. He changed the set of that world and put them in a talk show. Li Yan and Miu Yang decided to play along with it. But suddenly, Miu Yang's late brother showed up in that place. Miu Yang was angry when he saw his brother there. He told Sam Biam to stop messing with him and his brother, but Sam Biam ignored him. During the talk show, Miu Yang's brother, who became the host of the talk show, asked Li Yan about the reason why he killed him. Li Yan explained that he needed to do that because Miu Yang's brother was trying to kill Miu Yang. So he had to kill Miu Yang's brother to save Miu Yang from him. Despite that, Miu Yang was still angry at Li Yan. Li Yan and Miu Yang then got into an argument. While they were having an argument, the set of the world suddenly changed again. Sam Biam told them that they had one hour to find him. He said that they couldn't see Un Ho and Hong Ju anymore if they failed to find him by the time was over. In the palace, Hong Ju looked very graceful in a wedding dress. Sam Biam was standing near her in a wedding dress. Turned out, Sam Biam had put a spell on her so that he could control her completely. After a while, Li Yun and Miu Young finally arrived at the palace. Hong Ju immediately attacked them when she saw them there. Sam Biam watched them from his place. Hong Ju, who was under the influence of Sam Biam, kept attacking Li Yun and Miu Young ruthlessly. Li Yun and Miu Young attacked her back. They were still trying to talk to her and reason with her. They tried to make her remember about the time when they spent some time together. Miu Young pointed his sword at Hong Ju. He could have killed Hong Ju with his sword easily, but he didn't do it because he still thought of Hong Ju as his friend. But unfortunately, Hong Ju stabbed him with her sword. He didn't do anything about it and didn't even try to attack Hong Ju back. Hong Ju tried to press on the sword that stabbed Miu Young's chest, but Li Yin stopped her right away. He held the sword that his palm got injured. Hong Ju didn't care about that. She suddenly strangled both Li Yun and Miu Young. But Li Yin managed to free himself and attack Hong Ju back. He was still trying to make Hong Ju remember about the time when they used to love and protect each other. Suddenly, Hong Ju remembered about the time when they got attacked by a monster. Back then, when she was a child, a monster suddenly attacked her. She was so frightened by that monster. Fortunately, Li Yun and Miu Young helped her and protected her. Miu Young didn't even care that he got injured by the monster while he was protecting Hong Ju. Back to the present time, Hong Ju suddenly threw her sword. Li Yun and Miu Young were shocked when they saw that they thought that Hong Ju tried to attack them again. But turned out, Hong Ju threw her sword at Sam Biyun. It appeared that Hong Ju had regained her consciousness. After that, Li Yan and Miu Young stabbed Sam Biyun with their sword. Sam Biyun was struggling to move his body because of that. Hong Ju quickly got Yun Ho and asked her to leave that place soon. Hong Ju and Yun Ho managed to return to their real world. Li Grang was relieved when he saw them. He asked them about where Li Yun and Miu Yang were and Hong Ju realized that they hadn't returned to their real world. Apparently, Li Yun and Miu Yang were still in another world. Miu Yang walked toward the helpless Sam Biyum and stabbed him with a special stick that could kill a demon. Because of that, Sam Biyum turned into dust and vanished into thin air. Miu Yang then took the glowing stone that was left by Sam Biyum there. Turned out, Miu Yang had been looking for that glowing stone all this time. He had been suffering from a curse, and it was believed that the glowing stone could break the curse. He then inhaled the glowing stone and he was suddenly free from the curse. He even managed to become stronger after he breathed in the glowing stone. Li Yan realized that Miu Yang was the man in mask whom he had been looking for. Li Yan and Miu Yang then got into a fight. Suddenly, Li Rang showed up in that place. He came to that place to help his brother Li Yan. Miu Yang finally decided to stop fighting with Li Yan and leave that place. After that, Li Rang helped Li Yan to return to their real world. Ryu Hai's subordinate went to the station and picked four Japanese people up. Turned out, those Japanese people were Shinigami mercenaries who had been hired by Ryu Hai. Ryu Hai asked them to kill Li Yan and his friends. After Ryu Hai talked to those Shinigami mercenaries, he came to see Sun Wu. He and Sun Wu discussed about Yun Ho. Ryu Hai told Sun Wu that he wanted to propose to Yun Ho. Sun Wu was surprised when he heard that. He rejected Ryu Hai right away. He knew that Ryu Hai did that as a part of his political strategy to expand Japanese territory and power in Korea, not because he loved his daughter. Apparently, Ryu Hai had anticipated that answer. He told his men to bring someone to that room. Sun Wu was shocked when he found out that Ryu Hai had kidnapped and tortured that man. That man was an activist who had been fighting for Korean independence. Ryu Hai kidnapped and tortured that activist to give a warning to Sun Wu. He threatened that he would kidnap and torture Eun Ho too if Sun Wu didn't allow him to marry his daughter. Mu Young went to the forest and performed a ritual there. He prepared a mirror and cut his hand until he was bleeding. Not long after that, a reflection of a man appeared on the mirror. 
That man was Mu Young's older brother, Qian Ho Young. Apparently, Mu Young had been trying to bring his brother back to life all this time. Ho Young told him that he would need a golden ruler and an heirloom stone if he wanted to bring him back to life. Mu Young knew that Li Yan kept the golden ruler and the heirloom stone. So he planned to find Li Yan and take those items from him. The next day, a Shinigami mercenary named Yusu Chibo came to see Li Yan, Hongju, and Mu Young. Yuzu Chibo was a Shinigami who had an ability to kill his enemy with his deadly poison. At first, Li Yan, Hongju, and Mu Young underestimated Yuzu Chibo. They doubted that Yuzu Chibo could defeat them. Yuzu Chibo then snapped his fingers. Suddenly, Hongju and Mu Young began to vomit blood. Li Yan was surprised when he saw that. Yuzu Chibo explained that Hongju and Mu Young had inhaled the poison that he put into the air. He told Li Yan that he would give him one hour to think and decide about what he would do to save Hanju and Mu Yang. He said that he would give Li Yan the cure to the poison if he gave the heirloom stone to him. Li Yan finally decided to give the heirloom stone to Yusu Chibo. But when Yusu Chibo was about to get the heirloom stone, Hanju suddenly attacked him. Yusu Chibo and Li Yan's group then got into a fight. After a while, Li Yan and his group finally managed to defeat Yusu Chibo. Hanju checked the box that Yusu Chibo carried and found some knives inside. She used those knives to torture Yuzu Chibo and forced him to give the cure to her, but Yuzu Chibo refused to do that. Instead, he smiled creepily and spat on them. Hongju was angry because of that. She approached Yuzu Chibo and began to punch him in the stomach. Yuzu Chibo fell down and collided with a stone. He died instantly because of that. At the hotel, Li Rang and Yu He were trying to run away from the Yakshas. Fortunately, Shinju and Du Ma came to that place and saved them from those Yakshas. Li Rang and Yu He went upstairs and headed to a room. But when Yu He went inside, a Yaksha who had been hiding in that room suddenly attacked and bit her. Li Rang was surprised when he saw that. He immediately attacked the Yaksha and saved Yu He from it. After Li Yan, Mu Yang, and Han Ju defeated Yu Siu Chibo, they tried to find a way to return to the hotel. They walked and walked to get out of the forest, but they kept returning to the same spot. To make the situation worse, Mu Yang suddenly collapsed and Han Ju was dying. It appeared that Yusu Chibo's poison that they inhaled earlier still affected them. Suddenly, a Shinigami mercenary named Yuki showed up in that place. Yuki said that she got a crush on Li Yan and gave him a snowman. Hanju was jealous when she saw that. She quickly interrupted them and told Yuki to stay away from Li Yan. Yuki and Hanju argued about which one between them who deserved to be with Li Yan. Their argument got heated, and they finally got into a fight. Li Yan helped Hanju to attack Yuki. He held Yuki's hand, but his hand suddenly got frozen. Turned out, Yuki was a Shinigami who had an ability to free someone. Li Yan then offered Yuki a deal. He said that he would give her the golden ruler if she gave him the cure to the poison. Li Rang took Yui to the room and tried to suck out the venom from the wound in Yui's shoulder. But Yui suddenly stopped him because she knew that it wouldn't help her. She told Li Rang to just leave her. She was afraid that she would turn into a Yacha soon and attacked him. Li Rang took out a ring box and put the rings on his finger and Yui's finger. He held Yuvi's hand and said that he would never leave her. While Rihai and Yeon Ho were going on a date, Yeon Ho ran into a woman named Bak Haija. Haija was the owner of the Obak goods store in Gyeongshan. Haija and Yeon Ho then went to Haijo's store and discussed about important matter there. Haija showed a box of dynamites to Yeon Ho and told her that she would fight against Japan. Yeon Ho said that she would help her and take part in the fighting. Suddenly, she got an idea. She suggested that they blew up the dynamites in her wedding because there would be many Japanese officials and soldiers who attended the event. She believed that they would encourage the Korean people to fight against Japan together with that explosion. After that, Yeon Ho returned home and came to see her father. She told Sun Wu that she agreed to get married to Ryuhai. In the forest, Lee Yin finally managed to get the cure to the poison. Han Ju and Mu Young were skeptical when they saw that cure. They asked Lee Yan if it was a real cure or just another poison. Li Yan then decided to take the cure to see if it was a real cure or a poison. They waited for hours to see the effect of the cure that Li Yan had taken, but Li Yan turned out to be well. Li Yan was glad when he found out that the cure was a real cure, not a poison. Yuki came to see other Shinigami mercenaries, Nudo and Ugama, and showed them the golden ruler that Li Yan gave her. At the hotel, Yuhi's condition worsened. After a while, she finally lost her consciousness. Shinju and Li Rang's subordinate, Mei Yan, came to that room. Hongju's bodyguard, Jai Yu, was also in that room. He told Li Rang that he knew a cure to a Yacha's poison. He heard from Mu Young that they could treat the Wu from Yacha bite with saffron. Shinju suddenly remembered that he once saw saffron in the restaurant in that hotel. But unfortunately, that place had been filled with Yachas now. So it would be very dangerous for them to go to that place. 
But Li Rang decided to take a risk and go to that restaurant because he didn't want to lose Yu He. Xin Zhu and Mei Yan finally decided to help him. Li Rang, Xin Zhu, and Mei Yan then went to the lobby. After observing the situation in that place for a while, they realized that the Yatches couldn't see, but they could still hear very well. So they decided to create a strategy to distract the attention of those Yatches. In the forest, Li Yan told Hong Zhu and Mi Yan to take a rest. Meanwhile, he would kill one of the Shinigami mercenaries. Before he left that place, Hong Zhu approached him and hugged him. While Hong Zhu was hugging him, she secretly took the heirloom stone from him. At the hotel, Li Rang carefully moved the music box and tried his best not to make any sound. He planned to use that music box to make the Yachas leave the restaurant. Suddenly, a man named Satori approached him and offered him a help. But because of Satori's recklessness, the Yachas suddenly found them and attacked them. In the forest, while Li Yan was looking for the Shinigami mercenaries, he ran into an old man. That old man asked him to carry him on the back because he got injured in the leg. When that old man was about to climb Li Yan's back, Li Yan suddenly stabbed him with his sword. Turned out, Li Yan knew that that old man was a Shinigami. That old man was named Nudo. Suddenly, Nudo jumped onto Li Yan. His eyes turned into blue and he stared into Li Yan's eyes. Turned out, Nudo was a Shinigami who had an ability to switch people's souls. He transferred his soul into Li Yan's physical body and transferred Li Yan's soul into his physical body. At the hotel, Li Rang played the music box to distract the attention of the Yaiches who chased him and his group. He managed to lure the Yaiches into a room and kept them there. But since there were too many Yaiches in that room, they were unable to hold the door anymore. Satori finally decided to abandon the door and run away from that place. Because of that, the Yaiches managed to get out of the room and chase them. During that chaotic situation, Shinju sneaked into the restaurant and finally found the Safran. After he took the Safran with him, he got Li Rang and Mei Yan and headed to the second floor. Suddenly, Satori showed up in that place and wanted to join them again. But Li Rang and the others were still mad at him because he had put them in danger. Mei Yan then punched him in the face and left him in that room with the Yakshas. In the forest, Li Yan was now trapped inside Nudo's physical body. Suddenly, he saw Yuki and Ogama in that place. He was surprised when he saw them and quickly hid behind a tree. He didn't know about what to do. He was not sure if he should run away from that place or greeted Yuki and Ogama. After thinking for a while, he finally decided to greet them and pretend to be Nudo. It appeared that Yuki and Ugama still had no idea that Li Yeon and Nudo had switched souls. Yuki and Ugawa told the fake Nudo to see their boss soon. Nudo asked them where their boss was, but they said that Nudo was the only person who knew where their boss was. Nudo didn't know about what to do. Suddenly, he had an idea. He asked Ugama and Yuki to come closer to him. Ugama and Yuki did what he said and Nudo began to stare into their eyes. At the hotel, Satori managed to survive. He had managed to defeat all Yaiches that attacked him. Apparently, Satori was the boss of the Shinigami mercenaries. He came to that place and disguised himself as a nerd to kill Li Yan and his group. After he defeated the Yaiches, he headed to Yui's room to kill Li Rang and the others. In the forest, Mu Yang and Han Ju reunited with Li Yan. They had no idea that Li Yan and Mudo had switched souls, and that they talked to Nudo who pretended to be Li Yan. Suddenly, Ogama and Yuki came to that place and attacked Han Ju and Mu Yang. The Shinigami mercenaries and the mountain gods then got into a fight. Han Ju fought with Ogama and Mu Yang fought with Yuki. Han Ju wrestled Ogama and asked Li Yan to stab him with his sword, but instead of attacking Ogama, the fake Li Yan attacked Han Ju. Han Ju was surprised when she saw that. The fake Li Yan finally told her that he was not Li Yan. He said that he was Nudo and he and Li Yan had switched souls. Mu Yang and Yuki were still getting into a fight. Suddenly, Mu Yang was unable to move his body anymore because Yuki froze his body. Hanju was angry when she saw that. She tried to attack Yuki, but Yuki managed to attack her first. Yuki hugged Hanju and Hanju's body suddenly got frozen. Just as Yuki thought that she had defeated those mountain gods, Mu Yang slowly defrosted his body by using his power to produce fire. Because of that, he managed to move his body again and attack Yuki. Yuki fell down instantly because of his attack. Ogama was mad when he saw that and attacked Mu Yang right away. Ogama and Mu Yang then got into a fight. Mu Yang walked toward Han Ju and tried to defrost her body too. But Ogama stopped him right away and tried to crush his body. Nudo, who was still using Li Yan's body, was amazed by Mu Yang's power. He said that he wanted to transfer his soul into Mu Yang's physical body because he wanted to use his power. Ugama wrestled Mu Yang so that Nudo could transfer his soul into his physical body easily. But when Nudo was about to do that, Li Yan suddenly came to that place and stood in front Nudo. 
Because of that, the soul that Yudo was supposed to transfer into Miu Young's physical body got transferred into his own physical body instead. Li Yin also managed to return to his physical body. As soon as Li Yan returned to his physical body, he used his power to attack Mudo. He produced lighting from his hand and struck Mudo with it. Mudo died instantly because of that. Li Yan then took back the Golden Ruler and the Heirloom Stone that Yuki took from him. Yuki and Ugama ran away from that place after they saw what Li Yan did to Mudo. At the hotel, Yui finally woke up from her faint after she drank the saffron tea that Li Rang made for her. She could slowly regain her consciousness and finally managed to recover. Li Rang was relieved when he saw that he was so happy that he could see his lover again. In the forest, Li Yan, Miu Yang, and Han Ju decided to take a rest after their exhausting battle with a group of Shinigami mercenaries. While they were lying on the ground, the forest suddenly changed into the hotel. It appeared that they had returned to the hotel successfully. But suddenly, Satori, Yuki, and Ogama came to that room. It seemed that Satori had changed his appearance. He didn't dress like a nerd anymore. This time, he was wearing a Japanese army uniform. Satori approached Li Yun and began to count to three. Without any resistance, Li Yan gave the heirlooms to him. Turned out Li Yan was not aware of what he was doing because he was under the influence of Satori. Satori secretly put a spell on him when they met back then. After Li Yan gave the heirlooms to Satori, he finally realized that he had been controlled by him. Satori then began to count again. This time, he put a spell on Han Ju and Miu Yang. Under the influence of Satori, Miu Yang and Han Ju began to attack each other. Li Yin finally raised his hands and told Satori that he had surrendered. But just as Satori thought that he had defeated Li Yin, Li Yin suddenly shouted, Hurrah! Yuki and Ogama immediately attacked Satori. Satori was confused about what happened. Turned out Li Yin had also secretly put a spell on Yuki and Ogama. He did that when he was still trapped inside Nudo's physical body and stared into Yuki and Ugama's eyes. Back then, while he was putting a spell on them, he instructed them to attack their boss when they heard him shouted the word, Hurrah! Satori was surprised when he found out about what happened. He didn't know that Li Yan was able to put a spell on people. Li Yan then ordered Yuki and Ugama to throw Satori from height and jumped right after they did that. After Yuki and Ugama left that place, Li Yan thought that there was nothing that he needed to worry about anymore. But suddenly, Mu Young walked toward him and stole the heirlooms from him. Li Yan tried to attack him, but Mu Young managed to run away from that place. Li Yan was disappointed when he saw that he couldn't believe that Mu Young betrayed him again. Mu Young went to the forest and talked to his brother who appeared on the mirror. He stole the heirlooms from Li Yan because he wanted to bring his brother back to life, and he needed those heirlooms to do it. The next morning, Xin Ju and the others took Li Yan back to the inn. Li Yan needed to receive treatment soon because he was badly injured after he fought with a group of Shinigami mercenaries. In her room, Hanju was lying weak on the bed. She was also badly injured and receiving treatment now. Her bodyguard Jie Yu accompanied her and took care of her. A few days later, Li Yan finally began to recover. That afternoon, Yun Ho went to Hong Hu's inn and said that she wanted to ask Li Yan for help. She revealed that she planned to blow up dynamites in her wedding and she wanted Li Yan to take part in it. Li Yan immediately agreed to do that. He said that he would help Un Ho to fight for Korean independence. Later, Li Yin came to the Afterlife Immigration Office. He told Talipa that Miu Young had stolen the Golden Ruler. Talipa then began to tell him about the story of a mountain god. She said that back then, there was a good mountain god. But as time went by, the mountain god slowly became evil and hurt many people. So people finally decided to punish him for his evil deeds by killing him. After the mountain god died, people divided his power into four different heirlooms. One of those heirlooms was the Golden Ruler. Li Yan knew that Miu Yang wanted to use the Golden Ruler to bring his brother back to life. But he suddenly realized that the person who had been appearing on the mirror and talking to Miu Yang all this time was not his brother Ho Yang, but the wicked mountain god whom Tao Lupa was talking about. As soon as he realized about that, he rushed to the forest to find Miu Yang. Tao Lupa warned him that there would be many great disasters if the wicked mountain god returned to the world. In the forest, Miu Yang was preparing a ritual to bring his brother back to life. He still had no idea that the person who had been appearing on the mirror and talking to him all this time was not his brother, but a wicked mountain god. After he finished preparing the ritual, he began to perform the ritual by setting the symbol that he made on the ground on fire. As the fire slowly died, Ho Young finally got out of the mirror and showed up in that place. Mi Young was surprised when he saw him. He couldn't believe that he could finally see his brother again. He walked toward him and hugged him right away. Ho Young hugged him back tightly that Mi Young was struggling to breathe. After that, he finally told Mu Young that he was not his brother, but the real mountain god. Then he tapped Mu Young's forehead with his finger and Mu Young suddenly fell down. While the wicked mountain god was walking away, Mu Young lied weak on the ground and slowly died. 
Mu Young couldn't do anything to stop him from dying. All memories that he shared with Hong Ju and Li Yan suddenly flashed in front of his eyes. Not long after that, Li Yan finally arrived in the forest. He was shocked when he saw Mu Young lying unconscious on the ground. He tried to wake him up, but Mu Young didn't wake up. Li Yan cried because of that. Meanwhile, Li Rang and Yu He were going on a date. Suddenly, Li Rang said that he needed to go somewhere, but he would come back soon. He told Yu He to wait for him there. After he left, a woman in cloak suddenly showed up in that place and approached Yu He. Turned out that woman was Yuki, a Shinigami mercenary. Without any warning, Yuki attacked Yu He with her sword. Yu He was bleeding because of her attack. Not long after that, Li Rang returned to that place, but he didn't see Yu He anywhere. He cried as he realized that Yu He was in danger. Yu, he was brought to a room and imprisoned in a cell. Turned out, Jae Yu had been also captured by the Shinigami and got imprisoned in that place. The next day, Li Yun, Li Rang, and Han Ju were discussing about Yu He. They wondered about where Yu He was being held captive. Han Ju suddenly remembered that Tao Liupa had an ability to see within a radius of 1,000 kilometers. She said that she would come to see Tao Liupa and ask her to help them to find Yu He. The wicked mountain god visited Tao Liupa at the Afterlife Immigration Office. Talipa was shocked when she saw him there. She was getting even more frightened when the wicked mountain god stretched out his hand to her. Not long after that, Hanju finally arrived at the afterlife immigration office. She was surprised when she found out that one of Talipa's eyes had turned into black. Turned out the wicked mountain god had stolen her ability to see within a radius of 1,000 kilometers. At the end, Li Rang, Shinju, and Mei Yan came to see Li Yan and Hanju after they found out about where Yu He was being held captive. Li Yan and the others then prepared themselves to go to that place. At the prison, Akira ordered Yuki and Ogama to inject something into Yu He and Jeyu's bodies. But when Ogama tried to inject the mysterious liquid into Jeyu's body, Jeyu suddenly attacked them and destroyed one of the syringes. Ogama was mad because of that. He grabbed and dragged Jeyu's body to another place. Yuki stayed in that room and kept an eye on Yu He. Not long after that, Li Rang and the others finally arrived in that place. Li Rang found the room where Yu He was being held captive. When he entered the room, Yuki took out her knife and put it on Yu He's neck. She threatened that she would slit Yu He's throat with that knife if Li Rang approached them. Hong Ju then distracted Yuki's attention and managed to make her stay away from Yu He. She continued to attack her and knock her unconscious. After that, Li Rang rushed to Yu He and hugged her. He was relieved that he could finally see her again. Bugama took Jai Yu to the forest and tied him up there. There was a bruise on Jai Yu's hand. It appeared that Ogama managed to inject the mysterious liquid into Jai Yu's body. Suddenly, Ogama heard Hanju call Jai Yu's name. He realized that Hanju was in that forest and was looking for Jai Yu. He then tortured Jai Yu to make him scream. Hanju rushed to that place and finally found Jai Yu. When she arrived there, Ogama had already left that place. She immediately helped Jai Yu to free himself. But suddenly, Jai Yu told her to stay away from him. Hanju was confused when she heard that. Before she had the chance to understand about what Jai Yu meant, Jai Yu suddenly became aggressive and tried to attack her. He said that he heard someone whistled inside his head. Hong Ju realized that Jai Yu had been poisoned by a deadly poison. She knew that the deadly poison would make anyone become violent and attack everyone around them. Jai Yu tried to control himself, but he was unable to do that. He finally decided to kill himself because he was afraid that he would hurt Hong Ju. Hong Ju screamed in horror when she saw that. At the prison, Yuki finally woke up from her faint. Ugama had also returned to that place. Yuki and Ugama then began to attack Li Rang and Li Rang attacked them back. But after a while, Ugama managed to defeat Li Rang. Li Rang couldn't do anything when Ugama beat him up ruthlessly. Yuki also attacked Mai Yan and managed to defeat him. But suddenly, Yuki picked a knife up off the floor and stabbed Yuki with it. Yuki was mad because of that. She attacked Yui back and strangled her wounded neck. When Ugama was about to torture Li Rang again, Li Rang stopped him right away. It appeared that something had happened to him. His eyes suddenly turned into different color and he became extremely strong. Turned out he had turned into a nine-tailed fox. He was so angry to see his girlfriend Yu He getting tortured that he finally gained his new power. With just one push away, he managed to make Ugama's body bounce and hit the wall. He also lifted the axe and stabbed Yuki with it without even touching it. After that, he attacked Yuki with his bare hand. Yuki collapsed instantly because of that. In the forest, Hanju was still saddened by the death of Jai Yu. She was crying as she was looking at Jai Yu's dead body. Suddenly, Li Yan 1938 showed up in that place. Li Yan 1938 approached her and showed a small jar to her. He said that the jar contained the cure that Li Yan could use to treat Jai Yu's wound. In another place, the wedding of Eun Ho and Ryuhai was being held. 
There were many Japanese officials and soldiers who attended that wedding. Unho and Ryuhai were walking toward the altar together. After a while, they finally arrived at the altar. When they were about to make the wedding bows, Yunho suddenly interrupted them. Everybody was confused when they saw that. They were getting even more confused when Yunho said that that place would turn into a mass grave soon. Suddenly, Yunho turned into Li Yan and shot Ryuhai with his firearm. Turned out Li Yan had been disguising himself as Yunho to sabotage the wedding. In another room, Ekura stopped a man from heading to the second floor. He was surprised when he found out that that man was actually Yunho. Akira and other Japanese soldiers immediately shot Yunho, but Yunho shot them back. Yunho and those Japanese soldiers then got into a gun battle. Meanwhile, Ryuhai and Li Yan were getting into a fight. They attacked each other with their sword. It seemed that they couldn't defeat each other easily because they both were very powerful. Yunho continued to go to the second floor and began to massacre all Japanese soldiers in that place, including the governor who sided with Japan. Samu was shocked when he saw that. As a supporter of Japan, he disapproved of what Yunho was doing, which was fighting for Korean independence. Dunho told him that she had a right to choose what she wanted to do with her life. Samu was getting even more angry when he heard that. He took out his gun and fired it at Yunho. He kept shooting Yunho, but Shinju suddenly came to that place and protected her. After Shinju and Yun Ho left that place, some Japanese soldiers arrived there. They were shocked when they saw many Japanese soldiers lying dead on the floor, including the governor. They saw Sun Wu holding a gun and thought that he was the one who killed all of them. Sun Wu tried to explain to them about what happened, but they shot them right away. Li Yan saw the vase that contained the dynamites. He shot that vase, but nothing happened. Turned out, Ryuvai had removed those dynamites from the vase. He knew about Li Yan and Yun Ho's plan to sabotage the wedding and blow up that place. He threw those dynamites at Li Yan and shot them right away. A great explosion then happened in that place. Li Yan got injured, but he still managed to survive. Rivai used his power to strangle Li Yan without touching him. Li Yan writhed in pain because of that. But after a while, he finally managed to conjure his power. His eyes suddenly changed into different color and a lighting suddenly struck that place. Li Yan's body was lifted into the air and transformed into a nine-tailed fox. Rivai was surprised when he saw that. He then turned himself into his real physical form. Li Yan and Ryu Hai then got into a battle. With one slash away, Li Yan finally managed to make Ryu Hai vomit blood and collapse. Not long after that, the Japanese soldiers came to that place and surrounded Li Yan. But fortunately, Han Ju showed up in that place and helped Li Yan. She told Li Yan that she would take care of those Japanese soldiers. She knew that Li Yan needed to leave that era and return to the year of 2023 that night. After Li Yan and Han Ju hugged and said goodbye to each other, Li Yan finally left that building. Hanju then took her sword and got ready to kill those Japanese soldiers. But when Li Yan was about to leave that place with a car, other Japanese soldiers came to that place and stopped him. But suddenly, Mu Young showed up in that place. Turned out, he was still alive. Back then, while Li Yan was crying for Mu Young in the forest, the Fortune God and Mei Ho suddenly showed up in that place. Mei Ho came to that place to help Li Yan to save Mu Young. Because of that, Mu Young finally managed to survive. Now Mu Yun wanted to repay Li Yun's kindness by attacking the Japanese soldiers who tried to stop Li Yun. Mu Yun told Li Yun that he would take care of those Japanese soldiers and told him to leave soon. After a while, Li Yun and Shinju finally arrived at the Afterlife Immigration Office. Not far from that place, the Wicked Mountain God was watching them. Li Yun and Shinju then prepared themselves to enter the Time Portal and return to 2023. Before they entered the Time Portal, Li Rang suddenly came to that place and said goodbye to them. Li Rang cried and told Li Yan that he managed to kill two Shinigami mercenaries without his help. Li Yan was very proud of his brother when he heard that. Now he could leave him in the year of 1938 without having to worry about him anymore. After that, Li Yan and Xin Zhu entered the time portal and returned to the year of 2023. In 1938, Han Zhu, Mu Yang, and Li Yan 1938 were still fighting for Korean independence. They used their power and worked together to kill the remaining Japanese soldiers. In 2023, Li Yan finally returned to his old life and reunited with his beautiful girlfriend Jaya. Li Yan was happy that he could finally see his girlfriend again.